welcome back to my channel y'all welcome back hey 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 a welcome back hey hey Hey, hey, welcome back me. Hey, hey, I welcome back you. Hey, hey, welcome back everybody. Hey, hey, y'all. Oh my God, it's been a minute. We are reviewing Love and Marriage Huntsville season three, episode one. Mar so messy. Y'all, Carlos King is a genius. This man manages to pick right up where the reunion left off. Most shows they want to come in and beat around the bush. No. First scene, we get Tisha and Marceau. They're sitting down, they're having dinner, you know, they're in a restaurant. And Tisha brings up that Marceau takes a trip to Africa without her and the family. And I'm like, okay. So first I thought, okay, well, maybe it was a guy's trip. Maybe it was for business. I don't know. Then he said that he wanted to take the trip alone because he wanted to separate himself from everything. Yeah, we can we can do that. However, when you're married, that's something you do when you're single or maybe dating or have an agreement with your spouse to do, right? You don't just up and leave the country without your spouse being in total agreement that you're going. So Tisha was a little offended by it at first, which in my opinion, she has every right to be offended. Tisha has never been to Africa. Marceau had never been to Africa. Their family has never been to Africa. He wants to go on his own, so eventually he did. Would y'all let y'all spouse go out of the country and you are not in agreement with that? Would you be okay with that? Would you be okay with them going alone to another country? So Tisha brings up the picture that Marceau posted after the reunion last year. The picture of them hanging out in Georgia and apparently the side piece took the picture and all of them are in it. Y'all saw it. I mean, the pot has boiled over on Marceau more so than Maurice. Oh, let me let me say this. Tisha's confessional makeup makeup was on point. I would love to know who did her makeup, okay? That was flawless. But anyway, Tisha starts saying things that the side chick is saying because she wants to be relevant. Like, we get that. We all know that. She wants her name in the street. She wants the game. She basically wants the clout. All right, so Tisha says that and she's like, yeah, she's trying to say this and trying to say that. She don't have a shred of evidence and all of this, which is true. Or maybe not maybe she does have it i don't know tisha starts saying things that the girl has said and marceau is like hey hey this is what you told me not to allow you to do it's uh, apparently it's been times in the past where tisha went on and on and on about a topic and she got upset with herself and got upset with marceau for letting her go on and on about something that's not supposed to be relevant tisha was giving this girl all sorts of light basically like she was about to start saying exactly what the girl said word for word in the, on social media. And it's like, if she's not relevant, why is she a topic of conversation? She basically came at Marceau basically saying that they're all cheaters. Tisha is not trying to bite the bait. She is going to stick with her marriage and what's being told to her by her spouse. She understands that there's a lot of talk, but she hasn't seen any proof. So she's not really truly influenced by what's going on here next we see lewis and martell honestly y'all i'm glad this is all that we saw of martell this whole episode anyway so they meet up and they're discussing um his life handling divorce as well as managing the kids and all how it's hard for him and it's been stressful and basically martell is turned to the gym and he feel like that's his stress reliever i feel like that's a good that's a good look i mean you're getting your body healthy um he has an issue with mel he thinks that she has two different phones and when she don't want to be bothered she turned the phone off and still have her life on another line right talking to whoever she want to talk to so his problem is that he is an active father and he wants to be talking to his children every day understandable y'all next we see kimmy and maurice Kimmy got herself a dog and he is so cute. Kimmy ain't never lied when she said pets and children give you the most authentic unconditional love you can possibly think of. They don't care whether you got money. They don't care if, you know, you're in a mood. They don't care. It's always the same response. Kimmy turns the conversation and starts asking Maurice, you know, at one point when we were dating, you told me that if I ever asked you a straight question, you would never lie to me. So Kimmy hit him with the question, did you sleep with the linebacker? Suddenly, Maurice is hot. Maurice wants to go sit down. Here's what I don't understand, y'all. Maurice and Marceau both have this roundabout way of talking and thinking. So if you ask them a question, 
it's almost like they are going to talk around the situation. They're not going to give you a straight answer. I don't understand how these men are married. I don't. Not only that. So Kimmy asked him, did he sleep with the linebacker? He wants to talk around the subject. Kimmy shut all of that down and was like, all I need is a yes or no. Because all of that in the middle is unnecessary. And he was like, I'm not, I'm not giving you the roundabout. She said, all I need is a yes or no. So he finally said no, right? But here's the thing. If it's just a no, why all the talk? Why all the, it suddenly got hot out here. Why do we need to sit down and all of that if the answer is just a no? See, certain things you need to solely rely on intuition and prayer. Because certain things just don't add up, don't make sense. And if you're not guilty, why are you making yourself look so guilty? He may, he may, he may truly be innocent. But if you were to hook him up to a lie detector, he probably wouldn't pass because of all of the anxiety he got up within him that's flowing out on camera. I don't get that. Marceau does the same thing, and I don't get it. So basically, Kimmy is trusting what Maurice is saying, and, and it, it just is what it is right now. So we next see Destiny in the studio. This is no disrespect to Destiny. This is no disrespect to any woman out here trying to find a pathway to relinquish and get rid of some of the anxiety, depression, anger, bitterness. This is in no way any disrespect to them. And I understand that we may not recognize all of what's going on within them. We only see a snippet of their life on TV. But why does everybody want to sing? I'm serious, y'all. Why does everybody want to sing? It's kind of sad to me. Um, it is what it is, though. I promise I'm not knocking any woman out here trying to get a record deal to, you know, feed their, their children, their family, or none of that. Because even during the scene, um, Tisha comes to the studio with Destiny and they start having some real conversation. So Destiny kind of lets us know that Tisha and her friendship has grown over the years. And I'm like, okay, so that is definitely possible. But a part of me feels like, what's the motive? Right? I'm open to it though, because Tisha does seem like she's a fun person to hang with. Destiny does also seem like she's a fun person to hang with, right? But I do know Destiny is strong-headed. I do know that like so I don't fully understand the dynamics because Tisha will fold at the drop of a dime so are you kind of looking for a yes man somebody on your bandwagon what's I'm, I'm just asking the questions that most people are thinking so destiny basically tells us that you know after her divorce things got a little rough she basically was doing really good in her career before the before she got married then she got married had a baby got divorced and in, in the mix of all of that, she created a business. So she left the stability of a job she had to go after her dreams and create a business. And then her marriage crumbles and she's having a divorce and she has a three month old. And nobody is expecting that when they decide to get married, have kids, any of that. So my heart went out for her when she said that because she it was so bad. She had to basically reach out for public assistance like, hey, I need to feed my son what's out there for me and i respect her so much for being that real on tv on camera because most people would slide that in the closet and don't want people to know what people really go through whether a camera is on you or not people go through it okay and i can only imagine what a divorce is like with a three-month-old i can't i can't imagine and i don't want to know but it's sad and it's heartbreaking so if that's how she got to get it out through music then then let it be tisha asked destiny has she spoken to mail they have not spoken since the reunion. Apparently, after the reunion, everybody was staying in the same hotel. Apparently, Destiny's room was next to Mel's. And Tisha came over to Destiny's room and they started talking about the reunion. Mel could hear everything they were saying. Tisha, you know, started telling Destiny what was happening because Destiny was not out there for the whole reunion. Basically, Mel overheard them saying some things and Mel went and knocked on the door, told them they would might want to be quiet because people can hear their conversation down the hall. According to this scene, Destiny says that Mel calls Tisha her enemy. Okay, so I picked up on something with this scene. Destiny is saying that Mel called Tisha her enemy. I don't actually believe that. For me, I believe Mel is calling 
Martell her enemy. But I think Destiny kind of twisted that to make it something that it's not, in my opinion, for the dramatics of it all. I don't know. I could be wrong. But that's just my two cents for now. Kimmy and Mel meet up. They're going to make a charcuterie board. Y'all, I know I'm getting old because let me tell you, I would be gung-ho for making a charcuterie board, honey. I would be so excited in there like a kid in a candy store. That's how I know I have hit the threshold of being old, okay? <laughs> because, uh, what? Uh, where we going? We, we going now? I'm, I'm excited to make a, a charcuterie board, okay? So they meet up. Mel said that Kimmy is a foodie, so that's the best way to get her out of the house, check on her, see what her mental state is as far as what's going on with the social media and Maurice. The accusations that he had, he was cheating on Kimmy as well. Basically, what they try to discuss is what was Marceau thinking putting that picture out when it's basically about his brother saying that he wasn't involved. What was the point behind showing that if he didn't want the heat to be on his brother, right? Nobody understood it. Kimmy says that the only two people that were married at that time was Martel and Marceau. Now, I got to applaud Mel for this because Mel said, okay, Kimmy, you and Maurice were not married at the time, but y'all were living together. We wouldn't have known that. We would not have known that. So, yeah, that's a big deal. Living together and doing something out of the state. See, that's why I don't, I, I don't do that. But um, she told Mel how I asked him. He said it didn't happen. So, I'm going to go off of that. Now, what I took from the conversation is that Kimmy, Kimmy, along with a lot of people, think that men just have men have this tendency to be comfortable and haven't wanted to cheat. She did say that if something happened after the date of August 25th of 2018, which is when they got married, then she would believe in her heart that she would leave. Either way, it's not cool. However, there is no exception when the person's married. So that's where she drew the line. It's a deal breaker. Mel tells Kimmy about all the things that she heard, you know, in LA after the reunion and she with destiny and leticia so mel says that she heard leticia say yeah because mel is a scorpio i can see tisha saying that however look if you're gonna cheat you're gonna cheat your sign the month you were born none of that matters none of that matters and anybody out here can cheat on anybody it is what it is again it's according to the person but you know when girls want to kiki it up they do try to fancy it up i don't know i don't know and they're not in the best standing, okay? Here's where Mel has basically cut both of them off, cut, cut and dry, it is what it is. Because Mel said that she started to piece it together that basically Destiny is befriending Tisha to try to get at her, I think, is what she meant by that. Destiny knows how much Tisha and Mel have been through and it's not the best, they're not on the best of terms at that particular time. So Destiny inviting Tisha over to the room to talk about Mel. I can definitely see that happen. I can definitely see it happening. Especially when Mel has not been so much of a good girlfriend to you. Because remember um, the finale of last season. Destiny was basically telling Mel, hey, you don't call me. I don't really see your kids like that. And it's like, we're friends, but I don't feel like I'm a real friend. You don't call me for anything. Like, we don't really hang no more. I can see Destiny doing this as a motive to piss Mel off. Tisha is going over her head. She don't know. She don't see it. She's just all down for girl time, okay? Mel says that at one point, her and Destiny met up. And Destiny apologized for talking trash about her. I'm not sure if I believe that, but it is what it is. At the end of the day, a person will show you who they are. For Destiny to bring up the fact or try to argue with Mel last season on her album release day and the day was supposed to be all about her happiness and, you know, support. That wasn't the time nor the place to bring up what she brought up about. And they started arguing and fussing. It, it was just, I could see the friendship going downhill from there. And that's one of the things I hate about reality TV. I honestly feel like at some point, people that are... On these shows, they have genuine friendships when they get on and they allow things to tear them apart. They allow, I don't know what it is, but it's like if you're not giving them the attention they want, it's like they flick a switch and I don't, I don't bang with you no more. And I mean, it's like that in real life too. It's like even though a person may come to you and apologize and say that I'm sorry for whatever. Look, in this scene, I took a real good look at Mel. Melanie looks so broken. She looks like she is... I don't know the word 
she looks like she's putting on a brave face. But inside, it looks like she is done. Like, the girl is crushed. But she's still living life, you know? She's still living life doing what she got to do for her and her kids. But inside, I really hope she gets the healing that she needs to fully, completely be free. Because I can see the the disconnect. I can see the, the hurt in her face, in her eyes. I can see it. And it's sad because at that point, when a person has hurt you so much, you don't want to give people chances over and over and over and over you're kind of done with that and that's what she said later on in her confessional so it's like i get where mel is i get where mel is and it is what it is it's not always right but if a person is has been through the most and they don't have the energy to even deal with you and they choose to walk away then let them walk away let it be what it is the last scene we see micah micah is marceau's brother he's throwing a dinner for Marceau and Maurice to bring their wives, get together, talk this thing out, see what's going on. Everybody gets there. It's time to eat. Kimmy goes right in. See, I like Kimmy for for that aspect. She, she don't do that beating around the bush. Kimmy flat out asked Marceau, what was he thinking posting that picture? And teacher, oh, so we're just going to go straight in. We're going to go straight in. We're not going to, you know, we're just going to go straight in. Yes, because that's what adults do. Adults have adult conversations when they don't want to. To sum it up, Marceau did not think Kimmy was going to be involved in him posting this picture. He re And then he turned around and said that he really thought it was going to just be him getting in trouble with his wife. And he started laughing. And Kimmy wiped that smile off of his face when she was like, you don't realize that you and Maurice don't care about the things that y'all do. You're not bothered with social media. You're not bothered with any of that. But Tisha is the one who mainly gets hurt by the things that people are saying in response to what you have done. Here's the thing. When it comes down to that, honestly, I feel like Marceau takes Tisha as a joke. He knows that he can do whatever he want. He can say whatever he want. He can spin the tables and Tisha's gonna, he's, she's going to believe what he says. It's almost like, I, I hate to say it this way, but it's almost like he's a father figure to her. Like, my word trumps yours. Not a partnership. You know what I'm saying? So it's really sad because Tisha said that it didn't bother her and she wasn't hurt. But Maurice, is, she said someday she'll read the comments, someday she won't. It depends on how she feel. And Maurice pointed out, if that's what you do, then you are affected by what he does. Those, uh, Maurice and... Maurice and Marceau, they talk in circles so much that you just sit there and be like, they really believe the stuff that they be saying out of their mouth. And it's like, Tisha goes with the flow because she just don't, she will not stand on her own. I would love to see a season where Tisha puts it down. Okay, say what it is. It is what it is. Either you're going to stay or you're going to leave. Like, lay down the law. Like, Tisha don't realize how much power she has. It's not, yes, the man is the head of the household. Don't get me wrong. But... Certain stuff, when you're trying to cover what your wife is saying as if she doesn't have a right to feel how she feels. You're not even willing to listen to her feelings because of you because you feel so strong about what you feel like. And let me go ahead and debunk this real quick. Marceau definitely cares about what people say and do. If he didn't, he would not be on social media commenting back. He's on Facebook and Facebook groups commenting back. He's looking at what people are saying. Don't be fooled. He cares. He definitely cares. Because again, like he said in the beginning, if you if it was if, if the situation was irrelevant, you wouldn't be giving it time and energy. So the same thing goes on the other foot. Marceau, if you didn't care about what people were saying about you and Tisha, you wouldn't be on social media saying what's saying the stuff that you say as well. And he thought it was funny that he, uh Mari Reese was gonna get in trouble with Kimmy. He thought that was funny. And he didn't think it was going to blow up the way it did. I think he's, I think he did know. I think he just did not care at the moment. Also, um, at the end, Maurice was like, okay, according to social media, you had two babies last year. What if I would have posted a crib on, on social media and tagged you in it? And Mar Marceau was like, no, that's too far. That's below the belt. That's below the belt. It's not. See, Marceau, he can dish it, but he can't take it. It's, it's the same thing. It's something that somebody said on social media that you are feeding. It's the same thing. Y'all, tell me what y'all thought about this episode. Because, honestly, Carlos King dove right in. Y'all gave y'all what y'all wanted. <laughs> he gave you what you wanted, what you needed. Y'all, are y'all ready for Love and Marriage DC? I just hope things don't get ratchet. I really just hope things don't get ratchet. I'm, I'm down to watch, though. Y'all let me know. All right. See y'all till next time.